Sandra and I'm bringing you this week's SOS. Now, I'm not going to be looking at the camera very much because I am driving home from work, but I do want to share with you something that God has been teaching me and working through with me. I've been struggling with this for a very long time and I'm sure most of you can relate to this. How often do you make plans to do something, to meet with someone, to get something done? How often do you have a to-do list and life just happens? It happens. You could have this big to-do list with all this time that you've dedicated to it and then something else comes along that takes over your entire agenda and all that stuff that you had planned doesn't get done. Or some of it gets done, but not as much as you originally wanted to get done. Hands up if you can relate to that. Now, where are my people that get frustrated with themselves when they don't get everything on their to-do list done? That's me. So the scripture that I have for you is Proverbs 19, 21. And I actually just highlighted it and saved an image of it in my Bible app a few days ago. Proverbs 19, 21 says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's plan that will prevail. It's the Lord's will. What God wants will prevail. So Proverbs 19, 21. Now, it's not saying that you shouldn't plan. And actually, when I was in high school, I did a paper on what makes successful marriages, what makes them work. And this very wise lady told me that it's okay to plan. Go ahead and plan. But plan for God to change your plans. Now, when I think of even Jesus in the Bible, the Bible accounts that we have of Jesus in ministry, how many times did Jesus have a plan to go somewhere? Now I know, I know Jesus knew everything was going to happen, but how many times did Jesus share a plan with his disciples about what they were going to do and then turned aside and did something else? How frustrated would the disciples have felt? And if you've watched The Chosen, you've seen these uh, portrayals of the disciples and, and really fleshing them out, showing how they would have reacted to certain things. So if you knew that you were supposed to be going to a certain place to do a certain thing, and then all of a sudden Jesus said, oh wait, there's going to be a lady coming to this well within the next hour I need to go over there. How frustrated would they be when all of their carefully laid plans got interrupted? But then when you think about what happened, because of those plans getting interrupted. Jesus was able to reach people and, and touch lives and that's what he does. But how often do we in our own lives over plan? We, we try to be super productive, we over plan everything and then we miss all these wonderful opportunities. Now, what God's been teaching me with this scripture, with many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's plan, the Lord's will that prevails. I can have really good things planned. For example, every Thursday, I set aside from five until six o'clock, from when the time I get home, from five until six is Cassandra time. Because if I don't schedule it, I won't do it. And I've been realizing that I need time to just take time to pull back from everything and and just recharge however that looks for me so from five until six on Thursdays is my Cassandra recharge time see where this is going from six to six thirty on Thursdays is Cassandra works on homework time now this is not homework for school because I'm a teacher this is my leadership course homework through my church so I have doctrine to read I have things to do and every Thursday from 6 to 7.30, that is what I'm working on. Okay, awesome. And every 30, every 30, every Thursday from 7.30 to 9 
is discipleship time. Now, discipleship time, relationship time, that's my time set aside with Emily. She's my best friend, she's also my sister in Christ, and whether we are out running, or whether we are working on planning something for women's ministry, or we are just visiting and sharing our hearts with each other and encouraging each other, praying for each other, whatever we're doing, that is important relationship building time. And it's discipling of each other, intentional discipling of each other. And then at nine o'clock, come home, spend a little time with, with my husband, go to sleep. That's my Thursday. I have it all laid out, ready to go. That's exactly what's gonna happen and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. <sighs> I think there has been maybe one Thursday since September and we are now middle of November. There has been one Thursday where I think any of that has happened. And nope, there's not even a single Thursday where all of that has happened. Because in my five to six o'clock time, that's me time, uh, I have to eat supper in there. That's kind of something I have to do. Because from four till five, I'm driving home from work. So, not a single Thursday has happened where all of those things that I've planned have gone exactly the way that they should be going. And they are all wonderful things. They're very good things. My intention with them is good. My intention with spending an hour and a half on my homework for my leadership course for church and learning doctrine, you would think that that would be, you know, pleasing to God and, and, and I would find time to do it. Let me tell you some of the things that have happened on those Thursdays instead of me doing my homework. Now, I have done my homework on those days, but maybe instead of working on it from 6 till 7.30, uh, I go to Emily's at quarter to nine and I don't leave until 11 at night. But I still got my homework worked on on a Thursday. But some of the things that have happened to interrupt, and I use air quotes, interrupt those planned times, some of the things that have happened have been heart to heart, two and a half hour discussion with my mentor for my leadership training course, who happens to be my pastor's wife. Two and a half hours of solid heart sharing, hard conversations to have with each other. That's not wasted time. Um, talking to a coworker or to a friend about something that they're going through. Not wasted time. Um, staying after school when I should be driving home, but staying after school to do a piano lesson on Zoom with a kid who couldn't do it in person the day before because she was sick. Not wasted time. It wasn't on my to-do list. It meant that I wasn't getting my own stuff done. But it feels so good when someone takes time for you to me, that's showing Christ to people. And when I think of my huge to-do list that I've had for the last three days, well, six days, because we've been doing online learning for my school, uh, I've had all these things I wanted to get done, and yet things have happened, and, and conversations, and, you know, I wanted to work on report card comments today, and instead I ended up spending 45 minutes talking to a coworker who I always thought had it all together. And I realized she is struggling badly right now. Did I get all my report card comments done? No. Is it still a big list of things on my to-do list? Yup. Did I invest in someone and share Christ with them by taking the time to be compassionate and understanding and listen to them? Yes, I did. And when you think of that, which has the bigger kingdom reward? Not that we do things to get a reward, but what will make a more lasting impact in reaching people for Christ and with the love of God? Getting all of my personal to-do lists done so that I can feel like I've been a productive teacher and look how good I am because I got everything done. I'm following a schedule on my Thursdays, awesome. 
Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is God's plan and his will that prevails. He knows better than everything that we think we know. He sees the bigger picture. He knows what we need. He knows what others need. And I am learning that if I allow those times to happen and not get upset, not get frustrated, not get anxious about things that have to get done, if I recognize those times as being God intervention times and allow those things to happen, those times to happen, God creates time for all of the other things to fall into place. And so that's the scripture I wanted to share with you is Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans that you have, and they may be good plans, but ultimately God's plans prevail. And if you're going to get bent out of shape because all of the wonderful things that you laid out to do that you thought were going to be so good, if you get bent out of shape and upset and frustrated and annoyed or worrying because something happened to interrupt those plans, you need to do a bit of a heart check and trust that God knows better than you because he does. And if you are willing to submit your time to him, trust me, I've had it happen so many times. He will create the time for all of those other things to get done. And you might actually realize that where you're placing importance and priorities is not where they need to be. So shout out scripture. God's plan will prevail over anything you have planned. So go ahead and plan. Absolutely. But don't be surprised if God changes it. And recognize and acknowledge that there's a bigger plan in place. God bless. I'm going to pull over and end this video now. And I will see you another time. Bye.